Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. Today's project, I'm going to make a custom build on this Victorian Ox 111mm knife. Now, for those that follow my channel know that over the years I've modified Victorian Ox Aloxes, adding scissors, wood saws, yeah, to 84mm cadets, to 93mm Aloxes. So I've virtually done everything I can in the Alox range. So I was thinking about changing the blade on my Victorian Ox 08 Soldier to a plain blade and I think I'll leave that for the future. I have never modified one of these 111mm liner locks. So in the future I've seen one online which I really like the look of called an outdoor tool. It's not available but I thought I might start with something a bit simpler and this is what we're going to do today. So I've got this two layer picnicker. Great knife. I carried one of these in my mountaineering youth. Never used a corkscrew by the way. But it's slim enough to go in your pocket. It'd be, it'd be a millimetre slimmer if it wasn't for the corkscrew. So there is one called an adventurer that gets the Phillips instead of the, um, the corkscrew. So what I'm thinking of, I'm going to change out the plain blade. There's nothing wrong with the plain blade. It's not one-handed open. But what I'm thinking of is replacing the plain blade, ditching the corkscrew, and replacing it with a one-handed plain edge blade. There is serrated blades on these, of course. Yeah, and no back tool. So I will save. A millimeter in thickness because it, it'll be uh, flush and it'll look a lot smoother and really the basically the tool set I would want for a lot of travel and stuff a can opener cap lifter in a more compact form and with one-handed opening so I've done a bit of video removing the scales off these for you guys I've uh, filed one rivet off and I will now start to take this apart. So whether the camera can appreciate that. These are all three millimeter pins. And they're like little top hats, but there's a ridge on the top, that's what grabs the scale. But they appear different on either side. I can't imagine they are, it's just the way the machine is crimping them. So I'm gonna try and drill these and retain this lip. So I'll need to go careful and when I come to repaint them it'll be a learning experience so I, I'll start on this before I get onto something much thicker and I think it's going to be a worthwhile project guys. So if you want to see me disassemble and reassemble an 111mm line lock that's what's coming up guys. It's going to be a long video. So those that aren't familiar with it, all of the ones with the plastic types scales are held in place by the uh, the outer rivets. So whether the camera's seeing that, they're actually got a lip on them. They're quite sharp. <coughs> and when you see the little curly tails here, that's the plastic being uh, cut away when they were pressed on. So the, they're all similar enough. So I've removed the scales on this one. Now, what I normally do, I put a small tool, I'm just using the Victorian up screwdriver here, any small tool will do. I ease them up just enough so that I can get a tool to start under it. Okay. So I know roughly where they are. So what you don't want to do is to rip it this way. That will knack it. So just work it around. There we go working down. I'll feel the, the tool hit the other pin. Work around it. Continue down. Until it pops. Come to the end. Twisting it. And boom. We're off. So that'll also work. Now the smaller keychain ones I've got pins on the access point. So just come out the end. Do it gently. Bring it down. And there we are, here's a good clamp. Okay guys, I've got this clamped down at the moment. Now what I'll do, once I get a side plate off, 
I'll make a proper jig. So these are about 5mm in the outer diameter. I will make a jig that it will sit flat into. But until I get a side plate off as a template, I will just clamp it square. So I'm going to give it a few strokes with a file. There is a hint of a mark which could be centre, but I'm not 100% certain if it is or not. So I'll make my own centre. I can always re jig it. Pretty close. So I know that pin sizes is three millimeter. So I've got a three millimeter drill. I could start with a smaller one. Now I don't own a press drill. So this wall will be out by hand. Pretty good. Now, I don't know what to expect with this line lock pressing up on this blade. I'm expecting it to suddenly ease up and give up. But for you and I, it's a learning experience. Now, the collar's starting to turn. There she goes. So there is my collar. And I'll say my drill was pretty good today. So I'll repeat this two more times. And I should be able to just drift these pins through. So I won't have to do all six. So I won't bore you with that one. Ooh, let's have a good eye today, guys. So that's been taken off clean. There's that one. Slight burr on the main blade. So what I'll do, I'll just give it a few strokes with a file. Take that little burr there off. Not much. So what I'm going to do now, I'll get a larger drill bit and I'll make a recess so that hopefully I can just tap these out. Okay, what I've done, I've drilled a 6mm hole in my block of wood. I'm just going to drop that in there for the moment. Maybe I should have gone over to keep it a bit squarer. Side plate falling off. And there's my blade. There's my pin in there, so I know where it is. 
there's the other one so if the camera's seeing that well you can see the lip there so I'm going to have to recreate that so all four, all, all good so far alright guys what I'm doing now is I'm going to create a little jig to hold the brass pins so I've orientated one of the back plates if I decide to do another one that's got these screwdriver, corkscrew or Phillips it'll sit much better this way so I'll work this way up so that's why I've orientated it on it so I've got three three millimeter holes and a 2.5 so it didn't mark particularly well the inks run and uh, then I'll better position my cut pins in those holes and layer it up like a cake so guys it's always good to check everything so before I started drilling I checked the back plate so these two center holes including the back one here is 2.5 and only the end two are in 3 millimeter somehow I had the impression that the back spring was in 3 as well but it's certainly not so it's um, two threes and two 2.5s that was lucky yeah, if I'd used this as a guide I would have uh, damaged the plate okay guys so lucky catch on that one so I'll have to remember that these collars would be different as well so that's 2.5 mil this probably explains why the drill bit just wanted to cut the edge off it so live and learn first time for me so I've made this so 3mm 3mm 2.5s so we'll be building this knife from this side upwards so that's cool now I'll strip this one down alright so I'm trying something different this time I filed a, a little flat spot on the back tools so I can get my uh, punch in so previously I just filed it off with a file this time I tend to use the drill the start point there now, now I know, I can see that there's a definite difference in size. So I'll need to make sure I keep these collars separate from 2.5 and 3. Pressure would be handy, guys, but I don't own them. Slow and steady gets the job done. The moment I feel it ease, I'll back off. Okay guys, so this is our picnic falling apart. So here is the the back spring with the uh, the corkscrew which we'll be losing. For a much more elegant back. So with these ones, you can't really put the the back springs in wrong, which you certainly can do on the A-Loxes. It's the ones with the two tools on, the can opener and cap lifter, you can reverse them quite easy. And it's not until you are really assembling that you get the, it's got the wrong amount of tension on it. So, got some choices. Do I use the double lock back spring? Do I need a locking cap lifter on a picnic knife? Hmm. Anyway, we shall see. Okay, guys, this is the fun part now. It's always handy to have taken pictures, which I never do, but anyway. So, in this orientation, <coughs> the original uh, center only had one layer, so this was the, the side plate which went down over most. Now on the picnicker, it's the cap lifter and can opener always first, then the liner lock, then the outer scale. So uh, we'll need two plain outers because we're not putting in the, uh, the corkscrew, and we'll layer it all up. Okay guys, here the fun of games begin. So I've chamfered the top of all these pins to make it easier to line them up. 
and we've got the knife in uh, this orientation, so like that. So the original Sentinel only had one plane plate and uh, one locking plate. Locking plate was at the base. So um, we'll layer up the tools and we'll work from there. Okay guys, the rebuild. So first layer of tools when we're working in uh, in this hand. Okay, so we're working up from the bottom. Is the cap lifter, can opener, and all on the back. So that's it there. So the actual spring is free floating. It's only pinned in by this joint here. Okay, so it's under a bit of tension, you can see it now. So what I did, I pushed back on here at the 90 degree stop marker. So it lays in there like that. As you can see, it wants to leap apart. But when the liner lock goes in, it'll settle down. So I'll pin this back together, get the, uh, the liner lock in place, and that'll hold that together. Well guys, that was a bit of faving around. I'll know for next time to put the uh, big screwdriver cap lifter straight out so this liner lock can drop as I had a brute of a time setting the back spring tension. So on the Alloxes, it's, it's not really an issue, but with this guy pushing, it needs to be in this position here. So I probably will have the same issue with the, uh, the blade as well. I'm just gonna wanna lift the blade up so we'll have it straight out for the next layer learning all the time okay so this is our main blade back spring off the uh, solo so we've laid this straight out the main blade since if I don't it'll be riding high on that So I'll bring that down. Now I've got to set the tension on the spring here. Get that to lock. So that's all I have to do there on this one. Press it down. Okay. So there's the mechanism. It's obviously locked. I press it down. Get the line lock off. Watching my fingers, I'm pressing this blade, and that's how it parks. So when I put the side plate on, I'm going to have to figure a method of holding this lock together. So we can use a plain one, this one here, and then we'll uh, figure out how I'm going to do these rivets, which will be something new again. Okay, guys, it's all together. So all I've got to do now is the collars. So this pin here is a standard rivet. I'm pretty confident in doing that well. And that will actually hold it together. So I'll cut this one off just over a, a millimetre. Then I'll, uh, I'll rivet it out. <coughs> then I'll put the collars on these. And I'll do the same and see how that turns out. At least with with scales on. If it's a little ugly, I can deal with that. You won't be able to see it. But I want it to be a good job. Hey guys, for this back rivet here, I've decided on I'm going to shoot for 2mm to start with because I've got room to hide it. Now I've kept the tools straight out so it keeps the uh, liner lock engaged otherwise it's going to want to push this apart and we don't want that at the moment. So we'll have a bit uh, so the rivets, I'll have to turn the anvil on the side because I've got to miss this other one. So a bit of pin. So 
So once the centre one's locked, I'll make sure I'm straight. And I can tidy it up. I'm probably doing a proper rivet finish. Should take this blade by the way. Let's lock that fella together. So I'll start with the main blade so I can close that. So I've got two threes and a 2.5, so make sure I get the right colours. Okay guys, so this is the, the centre collar, so this is the 2.5 pin. So these hats are on the correct way with the ridge to the, the uppermost to grab the scales. So I intend to give them a little squeeze in the machine vise, just to pin them in place. And I can work out how much I need to uh, file them and tap them to bring them home. Okay, so I'm going to get my axle pivots. It's probably more than I need, but I can always file it off. So. That's a tad tight at the moment. But we'll continue. Oh guys, we're getting progress, so what I've done, <coughs> I've taken this to the metalwork and vice, I wrapped the blades and I gave it a bit of a wiggle. So what I'm doing is actually setting the tension. So it's just about where I want it. So it gets that nice snap it should have. So I'll put a bit of uh, lanolin on there. So I'll get all the tools out, everything snaps good. Still got to work on the ream a little bit. It's a little bit tight there on that one probably. Just a little bit, not much. So I'll lubricate this up and work it a few times. It's not far off. And we'll put the handles back on and we're done. Well guys, I'm quite pleased with that. It worked out quite nicely. So it's a little bit slimmer than uh, with the corkscrew, which is what I wanted. Got a good solid snap on the tools. I've um, lubricated them up. Everything's working really quite nicely. And all in all, for the first time I've ever built one of these, it turned out pretty good. I really did. So I've learned a fair bit and hopefully you guys will get some value out of this video. If this content I create helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out greatly. And I'll see you next time, guys. Now look, Nana's going to the shops. We're going to the park. Mm, they will have Cuddly Woodly. Mm, it's like Cuddly Woodly. Come on then. Come on, come with the dad. We're going to the park. Yeah. He doesn't love his daddy, does he? No, he doesn't. No, I'm second fiddle around here. <laughs>